Tropical Storm Debbie lingered on top of the low country for days last month, saturating the area with torrential rain and dramatic flooding. That alone caused serious destruction in communities across our region. But the impacts of the storm and others like it also extend to places that managed to escape the flooding. A live inve investigation shows Debbie and similar storms have serious consequences for our water quality. And our, our Katie Kamen tells us it's a problem only growing worse. Mike and Joanne Marcel have called Charleston home for decades, and they love it here. The activities, the community, and the water. The water means a lot to, I think, everybody in Charleston. You got the bridges, you've got, you know, you can go crabbing, you, you've got the docks. It's, it's a really wonderful environment. Protecting Charleston's natural environment is something the couple's passionate about. In fact, they volunteer as creek watchers. We're taking the vital signs of the Ashley River to gauge its health. Once a month, the pair comes to Northbridge Park to test the water quality. I'm supposed to rinse it three times. They send their data off to the state and to the nonprofit Charleston Waterkeeper. It's important for recreation, but it's also important for health. To get slightly philosophical, water is life. But that life sustaining water around the low country and the quality of it could be a risk long term. And one of the most dramatic examples of that Tropical Storm Debbie. What we're seeing are uh, shorter times between these extreme events. And we're seeing heavier and stronger storms when they do happen, even on a normal afternoon thunderstorm. And so what we typically see after those are very, very poor water quality. At Northbridge Park, where the Marcells do their testing, Charleston Waterkeeper data shows the bacteria content was nine times higher than the state standard during Debbie and five times higher the week after. Here at Northbridge Park, this wasn't the only place that saw some startling water samples. According to the nonprofit Charleston Waterkeeper, every single one of their 20 testing sites throughout the Charleston area saw water quality that was above the state's standard for safe swimming. And on the low end, the high results were three to five times the state standard. On the high end, we saw uh, results that were 240 times the state standard. These levels are a result of the filth that accumulates in the water as it flows across roads and parking lots, through sewage overflows and lawns, and ultimately into our estuaries, creeks, and the ocean. The runoff collects fertilizer, fecal matter, and other contaminants, dumping it where you paddleboard or swim. Charleston Waterkeeper founder Andrew Wonderly says typically the environment heals itself with time. But with Debbie, it took far longer than normal, and that could be a glimpse into a future trend. It was about two weeks before we started to see improvements in water quality. After a normal rain event, uh, we might see high bacteria levels for like 48 to 72 hours. The issue, Wonderly says, is major storms like Debbie are happening more frequently, leaving less time for the environment to recover. And eventually, it might not return to normal. We put more and more stress on the system until it's just polluted, dirty, and degraded all the time. And that's very concerning for the overall long-term health of our estuary. That long-term estuary health has already grown worse over the past few decades, according to University of South Carolina professor Dr. Claudia Benitez-Nelson. Have you noticed that there's a trend of of water quality getting worse over time, like compared to something similar, say, back in 2000? Well, unfortunately, the answer is yes. Benitez Nelson says more growth and development means more concrete and asphalt and less opportunity for water to filter through the soil. And so that's just getting worse. And so the more storms that we have and with the population growth, of course, we also have rising sea level being in the low country. It's just the, the perfect um, grouping of, of different processes that are that are impacting our, our water quality. Poor water quality is something that should concern you, according to our local experts. Ear, nose and throat infections, skin infections, gastroenteritis, you know, on the extreme end, it can be some pretty serious things like uh, cholera and tuberculosis. It's a major component of our economy. It's, um, we love it, tourists come in. We love to get in the water, we love to fish. Uh, and then we love our seafood. This affects like every part of, of our lives being South Carolinians. Wonderly and Benitez Nelson say there are solutions and that falls on local leaders and you. It's important for us to really think about when we're building to develop that infrastructure that has the canals, that has stormwater ponds. The biggest thing I think we can do is, is do everything we can to 
to stop polluting our environment. Creating new wetlands where there aren't any or re-engineering wetlands or restoring wetlands where they were. Uh, it's bioswales, it's rain gardens, it's rainwater harvesting. And for the Marcells, who often spend their Thursday mornings fighting for better water quality, they hope you'll do your part so their home and yours stays as lovely as they've seen it for the past 40 years. This is your environment. And if it were, if you mess it up, it's not going to come back. It's not hopeless. You know, there's a lot that can be done. There's a lot you can do. For Live 5 Investigates, I'm Katie Kamen.